What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I am so excited for today's episode because I've been looking forward to this episode for quite some time now. A lot of you have been asking me, Luke, I'd like to learn how to make essential oils from my garden. And I've been someone that, have, that has really wanted to do that as well, especially given the, uh, the, the circumstances around this year and everything that's been going on. There's been a huge demand for essential oils to do things like boost the immune system. In fact, just the other day, I was at my health food store picking up some, uh, some stuff, and I noticed that the entire rack of immune booster essential oils was completely sold out. So uh, I wanted to talk about how to make essential oils. I think it's very important to, uh, to learn how to make essential oils because essential oils, if you're not using them for you know, immunotherapy or uh, for, your, for your body, you can also use them in two other areas, which are huge benefits. Culinary, you can use essential oils culinarily. You know, essential oils can be used in a whole host of things. Um, you know, peppermint oil, you can flavor dishes like peppermint. Uh, you can use uh, things like thyme oil to flavor sauces and whatnot. You can use these little potent drops of, of oil to flavor entire dishes. And so it can be very, uh, very effective to flavor your dishes very inexpensively. Another thing that you can use essential oils for is to protect your garden. We've talked about, I think at length, how essential oils can be used to protect your garden from pests. Things like squash vine borer, peppermint oil is very effective to protect against squash vine borer. You can also use things like basil oil, lemongrass oil, thyme oil. There's a lot of benefits to these essential oils in your garden against things like aphids, white flies, tomato hornworm, squash vine borer, uh, spider mites. There's a ton of benefits that essential oils have. And so uh, even if you're not using them for uh, medicinal reasons, there are other reasons to make essential oils. And so I hope you guys are gonna enjoy this episode. Now I'm gonna be making some peppermint essential oil because I use peppermint oil for sore muscles after a long day in the garden. I have a stiff back sometimes and um, sometimes I have stiff wrists, especially my left wrist because I broke it playing football. Um, definitely, not, uh, definitely not the funnest moment in my life, um, but I do still have some, some tightness uh, in there from some scar tissue. And every once in a while, I'll put a little bit of uh, peppermint oil on there and it is wonderful for it, really wonderful. So I use it for that, but also you can use it. I can use it to, uh, to flavor some dishes up if I'm making some, some uh, homemade peppermint ice cream, which maybe we'll do sometime. Some, peppermint, uh, some homemade peppermint chip ice cream. You can use peppermint oil for that, and uh, it's very, very effective. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, and also, I can use the peppermint oil left over. If I'm not using it on my body or my food, I can use it on my garden to protect against uh, pests. So I love, love, love peppermint oil. Um, you can also use this in uh, your uh, essential oil diffusers for just a regular aromatherapy. So love, love that. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be pulling up and harvesting a lot of this peppermint. Now, we had some peppermint here in our uh, little raised herb bed here, and it started trailing on the ground. And once it starts trailing, it gets out of control so quickly because it grows like a vine. It sets down roots all along the stem. And I talk about how if you don't get rid of it, it will propagate and self-propagate and take over your garden. And so that's kind of what's been happening. So I'm gonna get in here, I'm gonna harvest all of this mint. I'm gonna harvest as much of it as I can. And I'm going to uh, take it over to my parents' house and I'm gonna use their kitchen because uh, they have a much prettier and brighter kitchen than we do. And I'm gonna use uh, a distillery kit that I purchased. Now I got this distillery kit on Amazon. We'll talk more about it when we get over there. But I purchased this distillery kit for I think like $110, $115, very inexpensive. And so I'm gonna use the kit and hopefully my goal is that it's gonna pay for itself over the course of one or two seasons. All right, so we got a huge bundle of mint here. This is a combination of chocolate mint, apple mint, peppermint, and spearmint. So we're gonna take all of this and uh, we just harvested the whole thing, roots and all, and we're going to, I mean, we, we shook off as much of the dirt as we could, very important to do that, but uh, we'll also give it a you know, kind of a one-two wash once we get it over to the house. Um, and we harvest the whole thing. Now, a lot of people will suggest using the younger growth because it has more essential oil content, but the fact of the matter is, if you're looking to uh, cut away large portions of the plant, I took away everything that was growing on the ground. Every single thing that was growing on the ground, we pulled up. And that way we could really just eradicate it from spreading into the garden any further. Um, but we harvested the whole thing, you know, stem and all. It's all going to have essential oil content at the end of the day. And so what's really nice is you don't have to pick the prettiest stuff. 
you just have to pick stuff that has essential oils. And that's what's really, really nice about producing essential oils with the food that you grow is, uh, is that you don't have to, it doesn't have to be pretty. All right, so we're ready to make some essential oils. In the sink, I've got the mint that we harvested. Uh, this way I can rinse off any dirt and debris. And we've got our distillation kit. Now this is a really simple kit. And I'm super excited to talk about this just because of how simple it is. Now, things that I've seen in the past, they seem really overbuilt, they seem very overcomplicated, uh, and they're also very expensive. And for me and what I'm doing and the, you know, the scale that I'm doing them at, it just none of those really seem to, to fit my needs. But again, this is a, an a, uh, at-home version distillation kit. It seems super easy to use and a very foolproof. And, uh, and so when I saw it, I was very, very excited because it, it seemed like it really would fit my needs. Again, this only cost me, I think, like $110, $115 or so. Uh, very inexpensive for what it is and, uh, and compared to the other stuff that's out there. Um, and it's not going to do a whole lot. I understand that. It's not going to be for you know large, large batches. But for, again, the scale that I'm doing them at and the, the use that I'm using them for, I think this is going to be really great. So uh, it comes here with uh, just, a, just a regular pot. Uh, this pot is kind of like a pressure cooker style distillation kit. Uh, a lot of the pressure cookers uh, can be retrofitted to, uh, to be distillation kits, but this is very safe because um, it basically has a one-way steam valve. So all the steam builds up in here and it has to go out somewhere. So the pressure actually does not build up. There's no risk of this exploding, which I like. Um, it also has a, a rubber gasket that this lid sits on. And then these latches just clamp it down nice and tight so that, uh, so that it sits on the rubber gasket and does not allow any steam to come out. So it fits just like that, which is great. It comes with some rubber tubing because uh, you can hook this up to your cold water and cycle cold water through your, uh, through your condenser pot. Now your condenser pot is basically just a, a place that holds cold water and it's got copper coils. And what happens is the hot steam comes through the copper coil and then as it comes in contact with the cold water, it condenses the steam into liquid. And that allows the oil or alcohol to separate out from the water. Very, very simple, uh, very, very simple mechanics here. And uh, the one thing that I had to do is I had to retrofit it, as you can see, uh, because I don't have a way of getting to uh, my parents' cold water. The sink is very far away from the stove. And so this would work if the, if the stove was close to the sink, but because it's not, um, I just took a small piece of it, I just clipped it off with some scissors, put it on the uh, the in and out port on the pot there. And I'm just going to fill this up with ice water. That's going to work out totally fine, especially for, for my needs and the length that I'm going to be using. Again, if you're going to be using this for hours and hours and hours, you might have to replace it with some fresh ice and, you know, keep emptying it and whatnot. But again, for my needs, this is going to be totally fine. So again, this just, uh, has a little spout here that hooks up to, uh, to the, uh, to the one-way steam valve and that way pressure does not build it just lets out steam out this hole almost like a tea kettle and so very very simple just like that so now that we've got this all set up i'm going to uh, i'm going to undo all of this fill it with the mint fill it with some water pop it on the stove and we're going to be making essential oils that fast it's so easy to use and uh, i'm really excited so let's go and the suggested height that you want to fill this at is you just want to fill this up to the level that has, uh, that has plant material. You don't want to fill it all the way up to the top, not necessary. The less, the less water, the better, but you don't want it to boil dry either. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some, some ice water into this condenser pot here. And then that way, as it steams, the, the steam that's generated is going to uh, be cooled here. So I just want the ice to be in here so it's really nice and cold.
don't know if you can see that filmy layer, but that's the oil forming. Check it out. That is absolutely incredible. All right, so I ran for about 15 minutes total and I got this cup almost full and this smaller cup full. Now, not all of this is going to be essential oil. Most of this is water. In fact, about probably 99% of this is water. But you'll notice on top of both of these, there's a thin film. And if you really focus in, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's a little line. And that little line is the separation between the uh, the oil and the water and that is what you can actually take and pipette off now i have a little micro pipette here and this little micro pipette uh, is what i can use to suck off the top little layer and i can further refine it by just keeping sucking this up and uh, and then putting it into a smaller container letting it settle out and then sucking up the uh, the water by sticking it all the way down sticking it all the way down because the, the water is at the bottom, because the oil floats, I can suck out the water, let it settle, uh, and just continue to do that to further refine it. All right, and the final thing you have to do is just store it. And so all I've done is I've repurposed some of our old essential oil bottles here. And uh, these are really great because they're amber. You want a glass amber bottle because it protects the quality of the essential oil. Keep it away from any heat and sunlight, and that way it doesn't degrade, and it's gonna stay fresh for a long time. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. I really hope that you try this and let me know what you would try to distill uh, in the comments box below. Keep it uh, YouTube friendly, obviously, but you know, you could use limes for making lime oil. You could use lemons for making lemon oil, oranges, orange oil, anything that has a high essential oil content you could use. And so I'm really excited about this and I'm probably gonna be messing around with this thing for quite a while. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. I'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye.